Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about something that I hate <laughs> and that would be still lifes. I really don't like doing still lifes. Every time I have to do one I die a little bit on the inside and it's probably the same for you. But this video is going to teach you one, how to do still lives really well, two, how to make still lives very easy, three, how to make them fun enough and not want to kill yourself, okay? We're going to be doing that. If you're one of those people that that is interested in applying to art school or maybe you want to be an art major or maybe you're not doing that, at some point or another you're going to need a portfolio and it's pretty good, like it's generally a good idea to have still lifes, particularly if you're trying to get into a college because half of your portfolio needs to be like from reference or not from reference, from life kinds of sketches to show that you know what you're doing. So let's get into it. Before we even start our still life, we have to get our supplies. Supplies? Yes. You're going to need for this video a drawing stick. It can be a pencil. The best drawing sticks are shish kebabs, not gonna lie, or skewers. I got, I got crap from a previous video about using shish kebabs when that wasn't actually the word that was supposed to be used, but guess what? That's part of my vocabulary. <laughs> you just need a stick. You, it can be your pencil. It just needs to be a stick. You are also going to need a viewfinder, which literally, like, you can buy these at the store or you can just print them out from the internet or just make one of your own. It's, it's an index card. This is just an index card. The viewfinder has a little cut out hole in it that's the same proportion as the piece of paper you're using. So I eyeballed this, it's probably not perfect, but if you're doing an 18 by 24 piece of paper, it needs to be in that same proportion. If you're doing a square or something kind of weird, your viewfinder needs to have that same kind of hole, otherwise it doesn't work. So you need drawing stick of some sort and a viewfinder. That's what you're gonna need. So let's talk about both of them because I didn't know what those things were. I knew that fancy people, fancy artists did like the, 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 the that crap, but I didn't know how to do it. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it. The viewfinder is a holy grail of using still lifes because it literally helps you figure out where every single stupid thing goes. So before you even get started, you're gonna take your viewfinder and you're gonna draw these little notches. You're gonna make a line, little notches and down the middle, down the middle, and then like the, the three quarter marks along the sides. Then on your paper, the one that you're gonna use for your still life, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're going to make little notches in the same spots, rough halfway, halfway, and then at the quarter marks. I'm gonna go show you guys right now what I need and how to do all of the things because it's a little difficult teaching you guys how to draw a still life if there isn't a still life in front of me. Ha, ha well, let's go. Okay, so here is my lovely still life. It's something that I whipped up in like 10 seconds, so forgive me that it doesn't look super great, but here is what we've got going on. We've got tall things, we've got small things, we've got lots of cylinders, We've got lots of pink. To me, this is a great still. <laughs> so here's how these things work. Let's go back to the viewfinder idea, which is this little piece of card. I've got my little notches. Can you see my notches? There we go. You see little notches, right? So I'm going to use these notches to kind of figure out where in this composition I see something I like. And I can also, of course, turn it around and just kind of fiddle until I see something that catches my eye. And because of, for the sake of this video and for the sake of time, you can also of course move it in or out. I can only select maybe this kitty cat if all I want is that. Okay, so maybe I want my still life to look something like this. This is not the most interesting still life, but for the sake of this video, this is what we're gonna go with, okay? So, see how nice that is? Okay, so I have decided that I want my still life to be here, and I've got my handy dandy piece of paper right over here, out of sight, but not out of mind. <laughs> so I know it's kind of hard to see, but I've got my little lines going across here and here, so I'm going to very roughly, on my piece of paper, sketch out where I am going to do the thing. If I had two cameras, this would be very, very helpful. <laughs> but I can see that this potted plant thingamajiggy in this little paper clip that I put in it comes to about this part. So it's between the one quarter mark and the halfway mark. So I know that's going to go there. I can see this is my one half line and it's coming out right about in the middle of this part right here. 
You can see my little kitty cat. Its butt is at the halfway point, but it's pretty low. I can see this jar is about at the halfway point, and it comes to about the quarter point here, etc., etc. I can keep going and playing and playing, but I can use those lines to help me figure out where the hecky things are in my competition, competition, in my composition. So that helps me right there. The second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my drawing stick to help figure out the finer details of this drawing. So I have my pencil. If you have a shish kebab skewer, it's much nicer because they're very, very thin, but you can use the pencil that you're using. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a long skinny stick. So with my arm fully extended, I can't go any farther. I'm very short. I can't go any farther. <laughs> So I'm going to use this. So let's say I want to figure out how tall this mug is in comparison with the height of this big thingamajiggy right here. I'm going to do the largest thing first. You always do the taller item first. So with my pencil, I'm going to, oh god, this is really tall. I'm going to take, you know, so you can see the edge of the thing, and I'm going to shimmy my thumb. So that's about how tall that plant on top of the candle is. Now if I move it over to the base, again, keeping my arm straight, move it over to the base of that, we can see that the highest part of that cup, which is gonna be the back of that rim, is more or less about half of that stick. So let, I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna draw this first. I'll draw this first, exactly how tall it is, and then I'm gonna draw that, and it, I know for a fact it will be half. I can even draw a line on my piece of paper to make sure that I get it about half. And that's something that, just let me tell you something, professors love it when they can see tiny little faint lines showing, showing them that you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's okay to have messiness, okay? Same thing with this, this mug versus this jar. How tall is this jar compared to this mug? Again, keeping my arm fully, fully extended, I'm gonna go down to the largest item and I'm gonna say it's about that big. And then I'm gonna bring it over to the jar I can see that the jar is about three quarters of the of the height. You don't have to do it just for height, you can do it for width as well. The width of these flowers back here, again, fully extended, about like this, versus this jar, which is uh, a little less than half. I had a professor who could figure out like one eighth of a fraction. <laughs> I can't do that. The best I can do is about a quarter. So you can just use that to cross-reference every single thing you're doing. What's the height of that plant like versus the height of that mug? That's actually pretty different. See, if I was doing this without my handy dandy drawing stick, I might be like, oh, this thing looks about the same high, the same size as that, and I probably would draw it that way. But when we actually go and measure it from the very tip of that plant to the base, and we bring it over to that mug, they ain't the same height at all. This thing is much, much taller. But your eye can be deceiving, and that's why we have to have our little measuring stick. So to go back, this, always keep it straight and measure the largest thing first and then compare it to the smaller thing. And this, your viewfinder, this one you can move as much as you want, but once you figure out that location, try to roughly get it back in that location every single time so that you know what you're doing. Another thing you can do with your viewfinder that I forgot to mention is you can use it like a color picker. Let's say you're trying to figure out that color, this color right here of the little paper clip that I have and you're trying to see how similar it is to the fuchsia of this lay that I got. Um, <laughs> you can actually use your viewfinder to kind of select colors. Now, I, this is not a good example, but let's say I wanted to compare the color. Just find the color of that water bottle. So it looks like that, and maybe I was mixing my paint. I can kind of use that to figure out what color it's going to be. So maybe the paint that I mixed is a little too orange, I can tell that because I'm looking just at this color and I'm not letting the colors of the surrounding confuse me or get in the way of what I'm trying to do. And I can use that to kind of figure out my, my pinks because there's a lot of pinks in this composition. And like I said before, your viewfinder has to be the same dimensions as your sheet of paper. That's very important, have to be the same proportions. So don't get that wrong. Make sure that you cut this out correctly before you start using it. Yeah, I think that's about it. So that's my still life. Go be cool, guys. You got this. Okay, so I've basically shown you all the little tricks and doodads, but now let's get to the part where you're trying to make this damn thing fun. I've talked to you in this video about how to make it easy, but how do we entertain ourselves with it? Because bottom line is you are still creating a still life, <laughs> and it's still not quite as fun. Still life 
there is nothing in the definition of a still life that means it has to be kind of annoying and dull and boring. Anyone can drape some fabric and add some grapes and kind of do like add a vase of flowers. Like that's that's fine, but it's pretty dull. And get this, the college professors that are looking at your portfolio and are deciding, hmm, should this person come into our school? They will also think that that's pretty dull and boring. I distinctly remember having my uh, portfolio review day thingy and the girl in front of me got roasted by one of the professors because they were like, this is all just bowl bowls of fruit and flowers. Like, can you draw anything else? Yikes, you don't want that to happen. So they don't want you to do basic still lifes and you don't want to do basic still life. So what do you do? There's always cool things you can do with your still life. I remember one guy at my old college, he suspended toy cars in a fishbowl and it created this really cool look. I mean, it's very surreal, right? And then there's all these little shinies from the glass bowl. So it looks really cool. I did a still life once and it was all pink things. The whole still life was pure pink because I liked the color pink and damn it, I was going to draw that. You can also do something like your food. Like maybe you're going to a fancy little like Korean cafe and they like serve up to you this like gorgeous matcha makala thingy and it's like really, really interesting and pretty. You can take a snap a photo of that and then draw that. Now I don't recommend using photos, let's keep that in mind. But if you happen to have a really beautiful plate of food in front of you, go ahead, make your breakfast the most beautiful painting ever. And that will delight you to no end. Or maybe you wanna do a still life of all of your favorite things in the world, like all of the little mementos that make you the happiest, no matter how ridiculous it is. Or maybe you can do a really weird kind of setup where things just look a little surreal and a little bit off. But pick things that interest you and excite you because you are gonna have to be staring at them for a very long time. So yeah, pick things that excite you, that make that are interesting to you, and you can have a lot of fun from that. I knew a whole bunch of people that like, okay, I knew this one guy, for example. He was in my painting class and we always had to do these still lives and the professor told us, you can alter the painting like 10% <laughs> and do what you want with your imagination. That's really, does, that doesn't say very much. But what he did was he would do the still life and then rather than have like a normal background, he would draw like this really, he would paint like a really like pretty sky, like a fluffy sky. And it was all, it always just made the whole painting look so darn surreal, you know? They looked interesting. Or I had to do this one, it was a figure drawing, it was a figure, figure painting, excuse me. And the woman was wearing like this robe and she had on a boxing glove and she was kind of sitting like this. And in the composition, I had it so like, it was cropped right above her lip and it showed her cleavage and it showed the boxing glove. So rather than make her look like a normal person, I put a little bit of red lipstick so it matched the red of the boxing glove. And it was this nice little play of feminine and strong. That's what I did. If you're telling me to change 10%, I will make it work. So yeah, <laughs> you have options. I'm gonna show a whole bunch of pictures on the screen of different things that you can do. Go on Instagram, go on Pinterest, go on blah, 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 and look at food photography, look at fashion shoots. People are really clever with how they are displaying certain objects, so do the same thing. The cooler the still life, the better it will be for you, because even if you're not the greatest at rendering, they will appreciate you doing cool things with color, with lighting, with composition, with interesting subject matter, and that'll take you far. The last piece of advice I have for you is don't be me when I was in high school. I hated still life so much <laughs> that I waited until the last couple of months for me to do all of my still lifes, and that was about 10 pieces that I had to do. Don't do that. Don't be me. Every single weekend I had to just stay in my room, cry and paint and draw and all that other crap. It's not worth it. Get it done early, have fun with it, and you'll thank yourself later. Anyway, catch me on my other social media and that's kind of a wrap for this video. If you have any other still life tips, leave them down below and I'll see you in the next vid. Bye guys.